Welcome to this episode of Dead Last. And this one, this one, this one may look a little different, uh, but this, but to some of you, it may seem a little bit familiar. But I asked you all to help me with this one because uh, a little while back, I wondered what would happen if we put the first movie of all the major franchises up against each other and then put their remakes up there to compare them. So we're ranking the heavy hitters of horror versus their remakes. Because when I think of horror tent poles, uh, these movies are where my, my th th this is where my mind goes. Although I'll, I'll admit that Hellraiser could be in there as well, but, but considering the most recent entry may or may not be a remake i i wasn't totally sure if it fit the theme so i didn't i didn't include it but this is a pretty solid roster of movies and of course their remakes um but which will be number one and will any of the remakes beat any of the originals uh, well in order to find out not only did i send this list out to my patrons but i also asked all of YouTube to submit their rankings. And I had 166 people answer the call, which I think I think is the largest number of entries that I've ever received. And these are the people that have participated. But I wanted to make this episode really special. It's, it's kind of the season finale, I guess we're going to call it. Um, and I figured what better way to do that than to make this an official dead last reunion. When this show began, it had a panel of guests. And guess who's back? Yes, indeed. I needed some help with this one. I needed some real horror experts. And, and I brought on the boys. Uh, and in case you've never met them, let's see who we have here. First up, you know him. You love him. It's Derek. I'm going in alphabetic order. It's Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome Sorry. back. It, it, it's been a while. Yeah, not as long as your other two panelists, but it has been a while. Uh, if you've been itching in the comments to see a panel of dead last again, well, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. That's right. And Derek, if you don't know, is the host and creator of the amazing Shindig Radio and also HalloweenShindig.com, which you can find on the internets. Well, coming up next, you've seen him. You love him as well. He's very wide. It's Matty Mastrella. <laughs> <laughs> He's very wide. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you? Matt, it's good to have you back. And uh, Matt has been coming along to uh, play some horror trivia with me lately as well, too. And it's the scariest damn night of the year. Because <laughs> I feel the pressure <laughs> every time I go. Uh, and finally, but of course not least... Uh, especially in terms of girth, it is Mikey Rotella back in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> Not as wise, Matt, I don't think, am I? Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, I don't know when he said wide, I thought he was going to Mikey, and I was like, man, that's fat shaming us all. Nice I'm glad, glad to be like, here. I meant like barrel. I meant like this. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> Not talking about your your guts. Yeah, I mean, I'm the I'm the I'm the widest of that group. <laughs> but now, okay, so let's get to this list with 166 rankings. I guess I should point out that the best possible score that a movie have would be 166 points. That's if every single person voted for the same movie. Number one, that's not going to happen. Um, and the worst score that it would have would be 1,000. 660 points if everyone voted for the same film in the last again something that has never happened in the history of the show and i promise you that this one gets pretty exciting but before we get to the list itself i've got to ask fellas do you think any of the remakes beat any of the originals boy i sure you? hope not <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I mean, if, if you're asking, I guess they pro one of them probably did, but whew, that's disappointing. Yeah, there's only a couple remakes that beat any original, and that's The Fly and The Thing. That's two that I, I love more than the original films, and that's all I really can think. And well, they're not I, on this list. Yeah, exactly. 
No, yeah. I, I, I'm sure that a remake has, has beat an original on this list. I can almost, you know, guarantee it knowing some of your audience. <laughs> but no, but it, it, it would, it's definitely surprising. I mean, and it's not on my list. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, all right, let's find out where these all landed here. All right, here we go. So coming in at dead last, our bottom of the barrel. Our dead last had a very strong total of 1,479 points out of a possible 1,660. And the worst of the crop. What do you guys think? What are we betting? Charles Blake. Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Derek? I'll guess Nightmare on Elm Street too. Whoa. It is... The 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street. Boom! You want to know how bad that this one was? A whopping 81 people gave it dead last. That's nearly half of all the votes. Uh, it, It wasn't all bad, though, since it did get two second place votes. No number one, but two second place votes. Um, On this panel, though, there was mostly scorn. Since me, Derek, and Maddie all put it in our dead lasts, with Mikey being the only hold, Mikey being the only holdout, putting it in eighth place. So, Mikey, what made this one not dead last for you? Honestly, I I hate this movie. I hate it with a burning passion. I just happen to hate two other movies on this list slightly more. No. I mean. I don't really. I'm not really sure. I, this this is like the hardest list for me because I hate half of these movies, and it's just like how much do you hate them and how do you quantify such a hate? And then I love uh, the other half, and I don't really really know how to really stack those against each other either. So this is going to be a weird one for me. I don't. I don't I'm not really sure. All I know is that I, at the end of the day, there are two other movies on this list that. You know, I would rather watch less if a gun was to my head and it was between them and the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. It probably kind of hinges on on the fact that new Freddy kind of looks cool in some way. If I have to compare it to nothing else that I love, I'd rather see that than some of the other stuff. I, I mean, it's just a, just such a weird you know, way to kind of qualify. I don't know. I know that out of the three of us that ranked this dead last, I have the feeling that the most vitriol for this film is probably coming from Derek. <laughs> There's three main reasons that I dislike the Nightmare on Elm Street remake so much. First of all, its vibe is just trash. It's a garbage. There's no atmosphere to it. It's just dull. It's modern. It lacks any imagination or interest in the dream sequences or any of the scares. Uh, two is, I, I like Jack Earl Haley, but he is no patch on the great Robert Englund. Ah, just doesn't work for me. And then <laughs> the third thing about the Nightmare on Elm Street remake for me is that it really gets rid of the the sins of the father kind of vibe in that freddie who they turned into a pedophile which is not necessarily you know a bad idea but the idea that these kids have already been victimized by freddie and then they're victimized by him again (laughs) for the fact that the parents murdered him it's just weird it's just weird and it doesn't work for me and that element of it i guess it's still the sins of the the parents right but i don't know something about that double jeopardy business with this version of nightmare on elm street really i don't know it just rubs me the wrong way i don't know it feel it, it, it's all for it's all a a feel for me and this just feels the most far away from the core idea of the original to me and it's nightmare on elm street i will never watch that movie again and i had to watch it twice i will <laughs> never watch it again i didn't even watch it for this episode Maddie, you also had this in your dead last spot, though. Well, I think you guys, uh, it stinks. All right, back to you, Josh. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. I, I love how they turned uh, 
you know, Jack Earl Haley into groundskeeper Willie. Forget the pedophile vibe. How do you steal from the Simpsons? The Simpsons steals from you. Anyway, <laughs> I, I can't that, stand this movie. I hate it. I I'm I'm pissed that you made me watch it again. Um, there's no uh there's no like heart to this movie. It's just a paint by numbers of the original, but it misses every single mark. None of the scares work. The CGI is garbage. Nancy is a throwaway character. When in the original, she's such a great character that you're rooting for her the whole time. I'm like, does she even matter in this one? Her and her boyfriend, who's supposedly Johnny Depp, uh, I guess. Uh, just awful. It's such a cash grab throwaway film. They didn't even try. They just said, oh, we got Nightmare on Elm Street, so let's uh, let's make some money. We'll just crap it out, get Jackie Earl Haley, throw him in a hat. And I'm sorry, he's not scary in this movie at all. In the slightest. I don't think he's scary at all. They show him gardening, rake, raking the dirt. I'm like, oh, you know, terrifying. Yeah, anyway, uh, I've said it enough. I, I'm just going to get more mad and it's not good for anybody. I don't know about Nancy having two spaghetti dinners in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. When I sat down and I'm like looking at these things, right? Obviously... I I don't I personally don't have any of the remakes higher than any of the originals. I I don't think that's going to be a big surprise. But I will also say that I don't automatically hate remakes. Like I'm actually kind of fine with remakes. Uh, when I look at a remake for it, there, there really has to be a sort of a defining reason as to why they're making it. And the best remakes are the ones that have taken that core original idea and either expanded it further. Or really honed in on like what it was all about and like just made the best example of what that was. And all the remakes that everybody talks about, they're all things that have basically just take that core structure and kind of like expanded on it and made it like bigger and took it in this other direction. It's just like, here's this concept that you're familiar with, but now we're thinking about it in a different way. And when I think about these remakes, that's kind of what I was looking for. And I was seeing which of these had a reason to exist, had a reason to kind of like do it. And when I look at what Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake did, it like, it just took the core fundamentals of what the original was. But then I feel as if it, it just like dumbed them down even further. It was just like, no, we're going to go even more basic. And it, it it's like, this really, really dumbed down super base version of Freddy that can literally just show up in your dreams and just kill you in your dreams. And that's essentially all he can do. And it just feels like Freddy for dummies to me. And it's not what I really want in a remake because I want to see somebody take that core idea and like really take it in a different direction that I've never thought about it before. And it doesn't expand on anything. And it just becomes this complete nothing. And then you realize, okay, so what did they want to say by bringing this back, by making by making this again? And literally, the only thing that I can get out of it is that they wanted to say is, give us your money, please. Look what you did to me. Can I just interject and say one thing? That I am just, Mikey, I'm having a very hard time taking your shirt seriously. Unless it's, eyes, unless it's eyes light up and it goes me. <laughs> awesome, All right, let's go down now to our number nine movie. So Dead Last is there. Uh, and honestly, with 1,479 points, it was never a competition. It was Dead Last from the beginning. No movie ever came close wow. to being Dead Last other than Nightmare on Elm Street. But in ninth place was a movie that was Oh, he's in ninth place. It also cemented this number nine spot very early on and never budged. It never quite caught up to dead last, but it was never in any danger of going any further. Because with 1,349 points, we're looking at Child's Play 2019. And much like the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, it was ranked in dead last a lot. It took it 35 times. The best score that it got, it, it didn't even reach Nightmare on Elm Street remake's second place. The best score it got was third place, which it got twice. Now, 
Interestingly enough, all four of us had it in a different placement. Mikey had it as his dead last. I had it in ninth place, exactly where it landed. Derek had it a touch lower in eighth place. And Maddie had it the highest in seventh place. Uh, Mikey, you gave this dead last. Yeah, and again, this is a pretty subjective, personal thing with me right now. I'm I'm kind of you know balls deep in the in the Chucky series. You know, I'm I'm very pumped about Chucky lately. I was never really a huge Chucky fan, especially with the sequels and stuff. I always liked the original Child's Play, but I've kind of like come into my own as a Chucky fan more recently. So right about when this movie came out, you know, it was was it was just disappointing on a whole nother level because i'm like this is not chucky in any way shape or form they you know, take taking the the dembola you know voodoo aspect out of this whole thing really you know cuts the balls off of it for me i'm, I'm just like well what's the point of any of this and and you know as far as i'm concerned it, i think it's like it does nothing good at all i can't stand the cast i don't like the puppet as much as I love Mark Hamill, and I would never want to talk bad about him, Brad Dorf is a completely different world, especially considering, you know, how he's still so dug into the character now in this series, which I think does a really great job of giving you Chucky and what Chucky's supposed to be and continuing that even better than a lot of the sequels did. I also cannot stand Aubrey Plaza. I might be the only person on the planet but for some reason, I'm I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah, you are you're alone in that, man. Because I, I I think she's awesome. And oh, uh, I can't I can't even do it. I sat next know? to her one time at Diablo Pizza, and she is she's she's super cute. Well, somebody who liked it quite a bit more, the person that ranked it the highest, the polar opposite, is Mr. Matt. Because you had it, you had it in your your, your seventh place. I can explain. <laughs> oh God, sure am glad it's raining. All right, look. <laughs> I have to explain myself here. I don't hold Child's Play in the same esteem as Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw, or even Friday the 13th. I like Tom Holland. I love him. I love, think Fright Night's great. Child's Play was just always okay for me. It was just like, okay, I mean, it's it's a scary doll. Doll's not really that scary. Um, it's got some good stuff in it, but the puppet's amazing. But this movie has one fatal flaw and that's it's called child's play i mean it's if anything it's it's more like megan and that it should have you know been called something different uh, because it doesn't really do anything to follow the original it's doing its own thing which i give it more points for on this list because i feel that you know most of the remakes are just trying to paint by numbers and this one's like well we're going to try something different I like the fact that uh, the doll in this one is trying to learn human habits. They're watching Texas Chainsaw 2, so that gives me points right there. Um, the, you know, and he's like, you know, trying to look like, oh, they, they think this is funny. And it registers with me like a Frankenstein. You know, it just seemed like they were trying to explore, do something different with it. I admire that to some extent. I don't think it's a good movie. I'm certainly not going to watch it every year or even like again probably but at the same time it's doing something different and i admire it uh for that uh, as opposed to every other movie on this list i actually tend to agree with you i think out of the five remakes the child's play remake is the only one that's doing anything interesting and that's taking the crux of the story which is a killer doll right a killer doll that's the the whole that's the beginning and end of child's play right and it's making it modern which is saying he's got it uh you know he's connected to wi-fi he's, he's uh le a learning you know computer and that's sort of interesting it's at least a different take i could care about chucky and i could care about child's play and i don't find this to be like mikey's saying as offensive a, a, a remake like i don't care what you do with chucky like whatever make him a weird doll faced thing like that doll is weird it, it <laughs> some of the animatronic stuff is kind of fun because it looks so bizarre but i do like the idea that the chucky's not necessarily bad 
right? Like he's just trying to do what he's programmed to do, but he's got these inhibitors taken out. Like what? Like the guy has the ability to just like turn him into like this swearing violent thing, like with the push of a couple of buttons and he takes out a chip. Like that's kind of ridiculous. It's like a kill. That's what the, what does he got? Like a, it's like a lawnmower or something comes out like a roto tiller in a, in a weird, like, watermelon garden what is going on in that scene the guy's taking down christmas lights in a watermelon garden yeah i don't know it's not good <laughs> i would never watch it again um but at least it's trying something this this is the one that in in terms of it being a remake i have the least issues with because it is it's the one that's basically like taking the concepts from the original and going in a different direction with them. It's actually taking the core basics and then building upon them and then doing something different with it, which should be something that I like, right? But the problem is, is that even though in terms of it being a remake, I feel as if it's the least offensive of the bunch, I, I just I think it's a it's just a terrible movie. Like it's just not interesting and every single time they threaten you with something interesting because yeah the concept of this doll that is essentially just misunderstanding its programming and it's not actually just pure evil as a killer is really interesting and i would love to see that movie someday because this ain't it it brings it up like twice and then it's just like nah he's just a killer doll whatever but part of the other reason too is when you look at this these concepts right you take a look at these movies and you've got jason you've got michael myers you've got freddy you've got leatherface and you've got chucky and the only two out of that bunch that are characters are freddy and chucky and clearly they dropped the ball on freddy right but you've got Chucky, who is a very distinct personality. So when you bring Mark Hamill in and he's kind of doing this completely different thing and it's kind of not the character, it never feels like Chucky. It's like taking something that was great and then we're going to do something different, but it's worse. I I don't care about that. If you're going to do something different, again, you need, it has to mean something that is expanded upon. And if the, the role of that character was more defined and more interesting then i'd be all for it but it's not so it's number nine for me no and can i just say two no. movies two simpsons references <laughs> yeah this doll set the evil <laughs> both three house of horrors all right we're on a roll let's go for third did you say Ch -ch chucky what no not even close we're now going down to our number eight movie and uh, yeah, the points are not getting drastically lower, although there's still a pretty big drop because, again, when you're dealing with this many rankings, the point differences are usually pretty big because we're looking at our number eight movie with 1,267 points. Are we finally going to get one of the originals in here? Are we finally going to get the original? It's Halloween 2007, Rob Zombie's magnum opus. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so it was ranked dead last again a very large amount of times. This was ranked dead last 26 times, still a very strong number. Uh, but it was ranked in first place once. It did get one first place note. Now, uh, we were all fairly close to being una unanimous here. I was the only outlier. Maddie, Mikey, and Derek you all had this in ninth place. I had it one notch higher in eighth place. And I don't really have a defense. You better. I, you better have a defense. Because <laughs> uh, I, I do. I, I, don't, I don't like this movie at all. Um, because my love for the original Halloween is so great. And, and you want to know what my biggest complaint about this one is? My biggest complaint about this one is when people defend the notion that it was trying to do something different because my biggest problem with this movie is the whole opening half of the movie that gives Michael his backstory, right? 
I don't feel as if the backstory is necessary. But usually whenever I complain about that, the thing that people bring up to me is that they like it because they're doing something different. But my problem is that they're doing something different in the first half to then give me an almost carbon copy of the original in the second half. So if you're doing something different that leads you to the same place, but it's a worse version of getting there, then it kind of makes it not good. But it's just, well, we get to the same destination, but we took a crappier route of getting there. And that's my biggest problem with this movie. And I, I just, I think that it's garbage. The only reason why I think I have it up a little bit higher than the others is because I do think that the second half does a pretty good job of giving me uh, the original movie in kind of an updated way. And it's just not very offensive to me. Um, whereas the first half is, uh, but I feel as if the second half of the movie is fine. Uh, I don't think it's good, but I think that once Michael gets out on the town and is killing people, it's okay for what it is. Um, Derek, I know that you have no appreciation for it. You've got it ninth. Well, I mean, yeah. Why do I? Why do I? <laughs> like, why isn't this dead last? But Nightmare on Elm Street is, and I mean, I could. I don't know. Or even why is Child's Play better than this? I'm not even sure exactly. Why <laughs> Why do I give it a pass over Nightmare on Elm Street? I don't know. I like Halloween, I guess. It's like, So it's a Halloween movie, so I give it a pass for that. I give it a pass for having a sense of style, I guess, over these other movies. It's the only one that feels like it was directed by somebody. You could point to it and be like, look, that's a Rob Zombie movie. And it feels like a Rob Zombie movie. Now, whether you like Rob Zombie movies or not is, a, you know, one thing. But it has a, it, it has his stamp on it. And that's worth something. And I think it's worth not being um, dead last. I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of with you in the sense that I don't like the beginning of it. I also don't like the second half of it because for the same reason. It's like, you just give me a condensed rushed version of Halloween, a film that is known for its wonderful pacing and it's, you know, protracted suspenseful horror. Um, and you cram all of that into basically half a movie and wow, you know, funny, it, it didn't work. Um, yeah. So th there's that. So I don't like the second half of it either. I, I don't like, and a lot of these remakes do this. I basically just turn Michael Myers into Jason Voorhees. Mm -hmm. I don't want Michael Myers to be Jason Voorhees. He's not Jason Voorhees. I will watch a Friday the 13th film if I want to see Jason Voorhees killing people. I'll watch a Halloween movie because I want to see Michael Myers killing people. He has a certain way about him. I don't know. He's not a, a brutal bashing through walls kind of killer and 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 to give and they sort of just make him a, a clone of of jason is it's uh, disappointing but the fact that you've given me any kind of anything about michael myers it, it just no stop dialogue for me is very important in a movie and i have to believe that that dialogue is coming out of the characters that they're not just reading it off a script that they're actually saying it and in Halloween, the redneck dialogue of the family, of Michael's family, is so bad. Give me the sub the suburban setting of Halloween is perfect because it's an unsuspecting neighborhood. You know what I mean? It's like all these girls are graduating and everything's going great in their lives. And then all of a sudden, death shows up. Well, in this Halloween, it's like, well, not only does death show up, he goes to jail apparently or in a mental institution and gains 400 pounds from eating what it's like all of a sudden he's 500 pounds you're giving him like steroids in there like it's just stupid and every line is awful and I, i'm just to me that like i hate this movie and i i don't particularly care for rob zombie i think the only good movie he ever did was devil's rejects because at least it was kind of a crime thriller and 
God, anytime he tries to remake or do horror, it's the same thing. Bad dialogue and villains that are just so bland. Anyway, Mikey. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had a hard time actually not putting this dead last. And I got to be honest with you, I'm so proud of the voters. And it, I, I thought this was going to be so much higher. And I thought I was going to like catch all kinds of hate for how much I hate this movie. And I, I can't believe that it's it's this low. I, I'm I actually really, really happy about that. I mean, maybe something is right with the world and the horror audience out there, because this movie was pretty fairly well received as far as I remember. I don't, I, I definitely had a lot of arguments about it. That's for damn sure. Because I think like, you know, the boys already already said, and I'm sure everyone that's going to be watching this that voted agrees, it misses the point. It misses the whole point of, of you know, what Michael Myers is, what Haddonfield is, the setting is wrong, the family is wrong, you know, the victims are wrong. Everything has this kind of oil slick stain of of uh, rob zombie all over it that makes it all kind of dirty like nobody is this idyllic american dream character or setting or anything that is then disrupted by this child murder that doesn't make sense and we can't explain what michael myers is you know he's a force of nature he's this thing he's pure evil the second you humanize him by just making him a jeffrey dahmer or or any any textbook serial killer that some psychologist could just check all the boxes and go okay well he's got all the the trait you know uh issues here that's that's why he's stabbing things the second you do that it takes all you know the romance out of the whole damn thing so i completely agree with these guys and i agree with all of you and i think that you know I, i'll sleep better knowing that mo a lot more people don't like this movie how difficult is that That'll take us down now to our number seven movie. Here's where things are going to start to get kind of spicy because we're starting to get near the, uh, the, uh, the, the dividing line here of, the, uh, of uh, the halfway point. But our number seven movie, th this was actually fairly close. Number seven and number six were pretty close in points. Not too close, though. About, they were still about 50 points away from each other. But at number seven, with 1,049 points, it's Friday the 13th, 2009, the remake, and not oh. the original one, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this one was ranked in dead last six times. That's a huge drop down. It's considering that Nightmare on Street was 81, Child's Play was 35 times, and Halloween 2007 was 26 times. This was only ranked dead last six times. And it was ranked in first place three times. So this movie has some fans. Um, none of us were fans of it, though. Um, not too bad. Matt, you had the least appreciation for this one because you had it in eighth place. Mikey, you had it in seventh. And Derek and I both had it in sixth place. So clearly we thought it was the best of the remakes. Uh, but Matty, you had it the lowest. You had it in eighth. Yeah, the movie's just, it's just boring. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. <laughs> um, not that the original Friday the 13th isn't also slow. It's very slow paced. But the movie starts out and it gives you quite a bit of Jason and it feels like, oh, okay, this is going to be somewhat fun. The second those secondary characters show up, I was bored out of my mind. I just wanted them to die. There was no likable characters at all none i was bored out of my skull i'm like this movie did not need to be made you could easily just go watch the friday the 13th catalog and get everything that they're going to try to throw down your throat in this one it just was another cash grab that they just tried to do like one through three real quick and maybe get to a sequel which thank god never happened for the benefit of mankind yeah i just i don't like this movie I don't like remakes in general, man. It's just really, it's not good for my blood pressure, Josh. Uh, <laughs> this is horrible. Like, I just, I, watching that again was even more boring. There's just nothing to this. Guys, please elaborate. I, I need someone to give me something that I haven't already said. If you found some hidden meaning in this movie, I want to know. I, I guess the only reason it would be ranked any higher than any of these other ones is because I, I like Derek Mears as Jason. I think, uh, like Derek said earlier, 
you know, uh, Jason is just basically, you know, the goalie mask and you could put any hulking goon in there and hopefully get something out of it, you know, but I, I thought he was good in there. He looked cool. I liked the makeup, you know, Scott Scott Stoddard did, you know, I, uh, I like him, you know, the, the fact that they kind of threw back to the first film, the second film with the, with the burlap sacky, you know, pillowcase head, and then the, the goalie mask, which I thought was cool looking. He's wielding different weapons. He's running around. He's hurting people, whatever. That at least looks slick enough, you know, to me. I think the movie, again, is like, it, it's so not Friday the 13th. I can't stand any of these characters. You know, the, the whole kind of summer camp element is lost, you know, at, at some point. I don't know what, what's going on. And, uh, I, it's it's terrible it's a terrible movie but for for whatever reason the way everything kind of looks like put puts it a little higher on my list again it's just throwaway you know nonsense remake that i i can't really stand um yeah that's basically it you know that's, my, that's how much i don't care you know <laughs> i think it's probably the reason i think i have this in six is because i think it's the only one out of the five that if ever so briefly actually makes me feel like I'm watching something from the original series, there's moments, there's glimmers, there's like hits of it where I'm like, oh, that's kind of Friday the 13th ish. It has nudity. That's a plus. That's, a, that's something that even Friday the 13th movies themselves don't have, but you're giving me gratuitous breasts all over this remake. And I'm like, yeah, you got that right. At least that should be there. And there's a couple of kills that sort of just feel like Jason. They just kind of feel right. But Mikey's right. It's, this is, this is dull. It's dull as dishwater, this movie. And Mike and Matt's right, because the, the opening's actually kind of cool. I, I don't mind up everything up until the title card and even the title card hit i think is great i think that whole like i don't know what is that 15 minutes it's like 15 or 20 minutes you get into this movie before they even say friday the 13th and i think that works i think that whole part is like oh yeah but yeah man those characters i know most characters in a friday the 13th movie are, are sort of annoying but i don't know i like most of them i don't like any of these people mm -hmm. at, at all which i guess make it oh yeah i kill them why not? Uh, we hate him anyway. And I guess that's sort of where slashers got to a certain point. And that's okay. But there's just moments. There's when he stabs her through the pier, right in the head with the machete and pulls her up and then her come out of the water. I don't know. I felt like Friday the 13th. And that's more than I can say for the other four remakes. For a moment, right? For a second. It's the most unegregious of the remakes in this roster and i will say that i think it's the only one out of the batch it's the only one of these five remakes that understands the source material uh and i i think that with yeah. the exception of jason taking a hostage which i don't I, I i think shows to me it is kind of like a this character would never do that kind of a thing but i guess this version of it does um, I don't think it's that much of a slap in the face of character of the character of Jason to take a hostage. And I think that having a new version of Jason that takes a hostage because he reminds him of his mother of, of his mother, it 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 doesn't seem to be that much of a blasphemy of the character. And I actually liked the tunnels thing because I feel as if it was sort of like a how do, does Jason teleport? No, he just kind of goes in these tunnels and shows up somewhere else. I think that that's interesting and everything. But the movie is, it's, you're not wrong. It's boring and it's a nothing movie that like, even now, like, I, I don't remember anything about it. Like you're talking about the scene on the dock where he kills somebody, whatever. I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> like, I don't remember that happening. It's just that forgettable of a movie. It's just, the characters are bland. The scenarios are bland. It's everything that you've already seen before. It's done pretty well. Like, I mean, I do like the way they do it, but it's just, it's, it's, it's a silent fart of a movie. <laughs> Let's go down to our number six movie here because uh, we're, we're at the point now where we've had four movies and we've had four remakes. 
this is the last chance that a remake has to beat the originals. So be prepared to get angry, fellas, because at number six, with 996 points, which is, uh, you know, a 50-point drop down, 996 points, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. That's right. This one was ranked in dead last eight times, but it was ranked in first six times. Uh, And it, you know, so it, it it's got the fans um we weren't that though although apparently this was one that the the most of us had the least amount of uh s- snark for maddie and mikey you guys had you guys had this in your sixth place spot me and derek both had it in seventh place spot and i'll i'll tell you that uh this movie when i saw it in the movie theater i came out of the theater and i was just like i liked that that was good that was a good movie and when people would talk about the remakes they'd be like yeah the texas chainsaw remake was good and then i you know saw it again later on i was just like ah that that was not as good as i remembered it and then i watched it again for like a, a timeline or something like that and i was like oh i, I don't like this Every single time I have watched it again, I like it less and less and less. And I think that my biggest problem with this movie is, much like I said previously about Friday the 13th being the opposite, the Texas Chainsaw remake movie has no clue what the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was about. It's That is a movie about insanity. And every single character in that original movie is oddly, like, sympathetic in a way. Like, you kind of understand why they're there. They're not evil. Like, the family's not evil. They're just messed up in the head from all these factors. And even Leatherface is, like, weirdly childlike and kind of sympathetic. And, like, you can obviously see him being abused by his own family. And he's very much a child. And he's sympathetic. And in this movie, it's kind of like, nah, they're just all evil. Everyone's just really evil. And the uh, the sheriff guy, he's just he's just super evil. And it just it loses that whole like inbreeding insanity, like crazy redneck vibe that the original one had. And it just I I, I can't deal with it. Can I just say this? I would like to thank all a hundred. 66 of you dead last voters for for doing the right thing here and making sure that you're all here, the remakes here. were uh you know low on the list and that one of them didn't like sneak in somehow i'm proud of you you really you, you really surprised me this time and i'm yeah thanks uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, the Texas Chainsaw series itself is kind of disjointed, right? As a franchise, like every one of those movies feels like a completely different thing. I think the biggest problem with this Texas Chainsaw Massacre is it's not called Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 5. Just call it Part 5. You call this movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 5, and I'm like, okay, sure, all right, fine. You watch the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's you're uneasy, you're unsettled. It, it's almost like you feel like you're watching like real footage at, at certain times. Like you're like, is this documentary? Like, what is this? This feels weird. It almost feels like something you shouldn't be watching. And this version just feels Hollywood. It just feels like you're trying to create a grimy vibe, but no part of it feels like grimy it doesn't actually it's like fake grime like set grime i don't know it just doesn't it doesn't really capture the essence of the texas chainsaw massacre which feels real lo-fi i don't know just icky it's not very gory and neither is this one i'll give it that it's not really didn't go for that like oh we're just making super gory and that's how we'll update it not i'm glad that it didn't do that and and everybody is it's it's kind of got that weird vibe right where the cop has you know pulled him over and you think he's the cop and then he's doing weird stuff and then later you're like oh he's a part of the family too like that feels texas chainsaw right like that's not too off of the beaten path but it's just not 
I don't know. It's not good. <laughs> I don't want to watch it again. I hadn't watched it in like 20 years. Oh, when that movie came out, like what? Oh, three, right? Yeah. I literally hadn't watched that movie in 20 years. And I was like, I got to watch this again. I can't rank these. I need to see it. And I watched it again and I'm like, oh man, hopefully I'll never need to watch it a, a third time. <laughs> what, There's you no mean reason man- to come back to it. You talk about the manufacturer grime. What you mean? The inbred kid that looks just like a regular kid with like a smear of dirt on his face and fake teeth in. But fake teeth that, it's got like Halloween like a teeth. regular kid. <laughs> even though it misses the point of of text chain so that you, it does put your 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 characters your victims in these really uncomfortable situations that they feel that they cannot get out of at every you know end of every tunnel when you think there's a light it just happens to bring them back to to that that same point where they can't get away from this family and i think that that in itself does kind of tonally hold on to what Texas Chainsaw does. And that's really the only thing that links the two besides skin masks and, and chainsaws, but at least it does that. And I remember when I did see it, when it, when it first came out, that making me feel uneasy about these victims and characters and what they're going through was at least, okay, well, this is at least a horror movie, not so much a good version of text chains of massacre but it's like it's it's doing what, it, what it's supposed to do these characters are intimidating you know arlie ermy which i think maybe is too big a character in this film is still really creepy and does scare you and you don't want to be hit in the face with a bottle by that dude you know what i mean and that <laughs> that scene itself was like oh damn like that's kind of gnarly my my main problem with it a lot like rob zombie's halloween is There are elements to the original Texas Chainsaw that are inexplicable. I don't know what's happening there. Nobody does. You know, I don't don't get that vibe from this remake, you know, but, you know, it is, I think, maybe a better put together horror film than than most of these other, other remakes. So that's why it lands at number six for me. It is definitely too clean. The original is, I think, probably the closest to a perfect horror film you're going to get. I mean, it's, it's moody. It's atmospheric. You don't know, really know what's going on. Like Mikey was touching on Leatherface is got a lot more. He has a lot more depth than a lot of the characters on this list. Definitely more than Jason. This just seemed like, okay, well, I guess Jason Voorhees has a leather skin mask. Now there's no personality to this Leatherface at all. He's just a, murdering hulking monster that's it arlie ermy is the only character in this film that might have some character where it's like okay he's this wacky sheriff he's pl- he's playing a role uh where do he find the suit they touch on that in the sequel which is awful uh also um but yeah less hate for this one just because like you guys were saying it does feel like a horror film it is uncomfortable at, at points. I even I in the theater I saw a couple break up because of this movie. The second that yeah, they were sitting next to me and my girlfriend at the time, and the second the engagement ring came out, she stood up, slapped him in the face, and went, "I never want to talk to you again," and walked out of the theater. Jumping Jesus! <laughs> Let's get to the good part of this list. <laughs> The theme of this list was the heavy hit of horror versus the remakes. And guess what? The remakes are out of the way. So everything from the rest of this list on is all of the biggest franchises in horror and their first entries. So we're about to see which of them takes that top spot. So let's find out because our number five movie, sort of the you know, the bottom of the of, of the uh, classics with 808 points. So if you were wondering how close that a remake was to being in the top five and beating the original, Close. Texas Chainsaw 2003 was 996 points and our number five movie with 808 points, almost 200 points lower, is Friday the 13th, 1980. So this movie was disrespected three times by a given dead last. Um, (laughs) And it was ranked in first 12 times. Um, However, 
the four of us were none of those because Matt and I both had it exactly where it landed in fifth place. And Mikey and Derek, you guys had it in fourth place. I mean, just overall, going back and watching it as many times as I have, though, uh, it's just really kind of dull. And I'm not saying that the kills aren't great or that there is some suspense. It's just, it really is bland. And then that final scene hits you in the face. And that is an amazing, I'll, I'll never forget it. I will never forget watching this movie when I shouldn't be watching this movie, mind you, on HBO, upstairs, everyone's asleep in the house. That scene jumps out of the water, scared the hell out of me. And it, that made it an instant classic. I think the only reason the sequels were made is that final jump scare, honestly, because it's kind of just a throwaway uh, Halloween knockoff, really nothing that interesting going on for it. But man, that final scene is gnarly and I love it. And so, yeah, I mean, having it ranked that low means no disrespect at all. It's just I had to put it somewhere. This is such an interesting dead last list because the the you know bottom five we're trying to figure out why we hate them as much as we do <laughs> and why we hate certain ones more than others because we can hope at least I can say I hate all those movies and now this top five it's like we love every single one of these movies these are five of my favorite films ever made now I have the task of trying to figure out where they lie you know in, in the ranking that's like the hardest thing ever and it really was hard for me you know, and Friday the 13th, although not alone, is part of sort of the jump start of, of slasher, you know, obviously, you know, Halloween proceeds, but it's it's like it, it helps like, you know, it's it's important because it was such a hit and because of what it did. And I, I love the movie. I think, like Matt said, it's one of the greatest endings of all time. You know, and, and it's it's all you know nothing but tension the entire time. Not knowing who the killer is 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 really interesting and fun. It pays like this this sort of you know homage to to Jallos. You know the, whether it's trying to or not, I'm not totally sure. I don't know that anyone really knew what the hell they were doing. To be honest with you, you know, and it, but whatever resulted in something very important. I like the Friday the 13th franchise. I like a lot of the sequels. I like Jason Voorhees. I'm a, I'm a big Jason fan. So that's why that movie is important to me. Plus my dad sang in the movie, and that's a big deal. It's sort of been a staple of the Rotella family since uh, as long as I can remember. And that that's cool too. So that's why I, I love that movie. And uh, that's it. There's something about the original like growing up around the woods and, you know, I went to summer camp. <laughs> Apparently you never went to summer camp, but I went to summer camp and just that setting in the woods and specifically in the first movie. Cause I think it kind of falls off with some of the later ones in this, in the, in the series, but this one specifically, like there's just something about the darkness of the woods and not knowing who's out there. Uh, that's frightening. And, uh, you also said that it, it jump starts. um, the the whole slasher craze and i think it it definitely does that but it, it is it it jumps out to a certain kind of slasher which is the more of the giallo like who who done it like you don't know who it is that mystery element that you don't get from from halloween right you know it's like, come on, it's, he's doing it the whole time it's a guy in a mask like that's a mask slasher Whereas Friday the Thirteenth is like a mystery, like who is killing these people? It's, it's it's out of frame. Like that's the big reveal at the end of the movie. Like whoa, it was her or it was that guy? Like what? <laughs> that whole time. Um, and that's a certain kind of slasher that I like. I like that kind of slasher movie, and I like the original Friday the Thirteenth. I don't know that it's, uh, you know, like a. Is it a great movie? I, I don't know. I like it. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Come on, man. Well, I had it's funny because I had it in fifth place too, and this was one that I was torn with because you're 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 100 right. And in doing the 80s project, it is kind of like seeing the evolution of the slasher film. And Friday the 13th was like one of the earliest kind of like it is that throwback to the whole Giallo thing of like we're just showing you their hands 
and you don't know who the killer is. And it's the only one on this list that is a mystery. And that is its greatest strength. And I love that aspect of it. And that whole mystery element of it is what makes it really great. And I think what makes it very interesting. However, it's also its greatest weakness because the reveal is one of the dumbest reveals of all time because it's a character that they've never even mentioned before that. It's, it, you've never seen her. They've never talked about her. It's just like, literally, it's like, you're, who is it? Who could it be? Who did it? And then the movie's just kind of like, oh, surprise, it's, it's, it's this person. Who's that? I don't know. She's the killer. And like, it, they very easily could have fixed that whole thing because you had the beginning with the hitchhiker girl in town and you had you met the people at the bar or whatever like that. Literally, all they had to do was introduce Pamela into town as just one of the people that lived there. And that's it. That's all you needed was that one little tidbit to make that entire thing make sense. And that is why it came down to uh, being in uh, fifth place for me. And my cat is about to knock down my green screen. I don't know if you can see this going on behind me, but he's going nuts. But no, it, it's the one element that really knocks me for a loop. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> the, a machete is just going to come tear. I know, it, seriously. Like a, seriously, <laughs> Pamela's on the other side saying, like, what are you saying about me? What are you saying about me? <laughs> now we go down to our number four movie. And again, a pretty big drop down in points. And number four, with 710 points. Again, an almost 100-point drop. We're looking at Child's Play from 1988. This was also, much like Friday the 13th, ranked dead last three times. Uh, but it was ranked in first 11 times, which is one less than Friday the 13th. Um, but obviously had more consistently high scores. Uh, and fairly similar on this. Uh, Derek, you had this the lowest. You had it in fifth. Me and Matt both had it in fourth. Mikey, you had this the highest because you had it in your top three in third place. So obviously, it's really uh, on that Chucky kick. Now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of love. A lot of love for the. For the uh, and that that's honestly that's honestly what it is. And like I said, I, I love these five movies so much. Like it's it's almost ridiculous to try to shuffle them around. And just just because of the mood I was in when I made this list, I put Child's Play where it is. I mean, again, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan most of my life, you know, as much as I liked that first movie. But lately, I have just had this little love affair with Chucky, and I'm just way into it. And I just, when I get to this point where I, I like these movies so much, I just kind of started listing them, you know, in, in ranking of like what did I have the most fun with these days? Like what can I throw on right now and just do some work while it's just on in the background? You know, what, what do I not have to be super emotionally invested in? What, and what was just a good time? And that's Charles play for me. And I, I, that's why it's, it's so high and everyone knows why it's so awesome. And uh, I obviously don't have to elaborate on that, but there's something too about that time, you know, that, that kind of eighties time capsule that that movie is to me and uh you know I, i'm just into the franchise right now and and where it's going and where it's been and it's just it's just it's fun i actually adore child's play like i i like the chucky movies in general i feel as if they're one of the more consistent franchises from beginning to end of just like watching them with kind of the least like oh god do i have to watch this one um, there's not one of the Chucky movies at all that I don't want to watch. They're all entertaining. And even the ones that aren't as good as the others, I find them to be very entertaining. And the funny thing is, is that like Chucky shouldn't be like, shouldn't be that much of a threat. Like you, 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 like the first thing that you think of when you say Chucky's coming after you is just, okay, just kick him, just kick him. Um, but when you watch the original child's play and you watch the movie, the movie makes it very clear why you can't just kick him. Like, Chucky was very good in that movie with really taking advantage of his size and where he could fit and how he could trick you into thinking that he was just a doll and, and, and he'll sneak up on you. And he really played that element up very much. 
And the voodoo subplot, that whole aspect of him having to get into Andy's body within a certain time frame really does. It gives that movie that ticking clock that just makes it more interesting. And you feel that whole pressure of the time aspect kind of coming into it. And it really does. It makes the movie feel uh, more interesting because you have this character that now has this agenda that it has to have. And it has a time frame that he has to meet. And really, not many of these other characters have that. Like, But Chucky does. And that really, it, it, it's a cool element to the film that makes it more interesting to watch for me. <laughs> All right. I guess there's, there's like doll people, right? Like, you know these people, right? They're, they're like really into doll movies. They're like, oh, Dolly Dearest, the puppet masters. And they like the doll, like the creepy doll is doing something. But I don't know, man. I don't care about a creepy doll. I'm not. I'm not hold on, hold on. I, I love Child's Play. Before, first of all, like I love Child's Play. It's a great movie. Brad Dourif is great. The the the, the Chucky animatronic is great. He's great when he's just like a little like person running around. Um, uh, and Chris Sarandon. It's all great. I, I love Child's Play. The voodoo is great. So don't get me wrong here. Like <laughs> I love Child's Play, but Ch Chucky never really just did anything for me. Like as just like a uh, like a horror thing. Like people are like oh Chucky, and I was just like yeah, Chucky. Like he's there. <laughs> I guess he's a thing. I don't know. I just never never clicked in a way in that way for me. Like I, but yeah, I mean I I like it. So I, it was no question to me. Like when you showed me the the list, like it was it was yeah it was Halloween, and Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw, and I was like Child's Play really like that's the that's the fifth one, and I guess franchise wise yeah it's got the most depth right now it's got a TV show even, um, I guess I would have expected Hellraiser more because it's Pinhead and not chucky but like i don't know like i guess i love child's play people don't get don't don't start being mad at me because i love child's play i just it's chucky i don't know all right cool <laughs> he's there uh, movies are a lot like songs like depending on uh what i'm going through in my life month to month my favorite song changes or what i'm listening to changes dramatically right same thing with movies. I was on an Omen kick for a while. I watched all the Omen films. Just recently was Hostile, and I regret that decision. But at the same time, you know, you go through kicks. So Child's Play means more to him now, for sure, because the TV show is so great. But I also get Derek saying, yeah, Child's Play is really not that anything that special. I love Tom Holland. I really do. I love Fright Night. And, you know, Child's Play is to me, lower than Fright Night. But yeah, I mean, there's great stuff in that. I obviously love that Tom Holland brought back Chris Sarandon, was like, come on, dude, let's do this again. Um, it's got a lot going for it. It's a lot of fun. But once you kind of know that movie, you don't really have to put it on every year or every couple of years. You've seen Child's Play, you've seen Child's Play. There's really nothing else to it. Uh, the movies have progressed into cartoony um, nonsense, which I do like except for seat of chucky i did not like seat of chucky but i did like bride and i haven't watched the tv show mikey but i gotta check it out because everyone's telling me how good the tv show is like oh you gotta watch it you gotta watch it the curse of chucky i liked i did like that but yeah i gotta catch up andy no please we're friends to the end remember this is the end friend all right, here we go. The top three. Uh, it's getting really juicy now. And guys, let me tell you, when you have 166 entrants and you're talking about a possible score uh, range of 1,660 points, it's really tough for things to come in close. And there's not a lot of close going on here. And when we jump down from number four of Child's Play at 710 points to our number three movie with... 666 points no way. It is texas chainsaw massacre 1974 and can you believe it that this was ranked dead last four times it got the most dead lasts out of all of the originals uh but it was ranked in first place 
24 times. So obviously much more love than that. Um, now, we had some pretty varied opinions. Uh, I was shocked by this. Mikey, you had this in fifth place. Uh, Derek, you had it in third. And both Matt and I had this in our second place spot. I think if aliens came down and said, show me a horror film, I'd be like, well, here you go. Here's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This movie feels like a nightmare. Everything about it is creepy, brutal. Uh, I remember catching, I was watching Terror in the Isles when I was a kid. I, before I even saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I'll never forget it. He runs up to the door, the hammer comes down, the door closes in that movie and scared the hell out of me. I was probably way too young to see it, but I was fascinated from then on, I'm like, what the hell happened to that guy? What was that thing? And then watching that movie as I got older, I'm like, this is just an incredible just film. It, it's got it was made for no money. It's got great pacing. It's got a great look to it. Everything is really grimy. You feel so dirty when you're watching it. You're like, you want to take a bath afterwards because it's so dirty. And you really care for the characters. I mean, Franklin um you know you 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 feel something for him you're like man i wish that guy would just die it's like you're going along with them in the 70s on this ride you know just kind of you know you don't want anything bad to happen to him but here's this awful thing waiting for them and it's just such a ominous uh terrifying experience when she's screaming in the back of that truck and then it just cuts to him dancing. And you don't know what happens after that. You just know she's going to have a really bad time in life. That is a really gut-wrenching thing to have to think about after that that film goes black. So, yeah, I just, I love it. Um, have at it, guys. I think it's probably one of the greatest horror movies of all time. You know, and, and I would put it like, you know, like Matt was saying, top three, top five best horror movies I, I think it's relatively kind of perfect for what it is, you know, and, and I, I think it's, it's sort of an example of, of kind of perfect filmmaking in a way, because my favorite type of filmmaking is, is the one where it's like all of the Hollywood glitz and glamour is completely out of it. And we just basically have raw ideas coming from people who might not even really completely know how to make a movie yet. And they sort of stumble into something that is, perfect you know and and almost accidental and it changes you know films in, in in a way you know the the thing that puts it at number five for me is is just basically that it's kind of a hard movie to watch because it's so good it it like unnerves you so well and it kind of disarms you completely when i i'm just like i don't love to just throw it on like it's not one of those ones that i just want to you know, put on and, and have it on in the background because it's it's scary. It, it, it messes you up a little bit. It, you get that queeze feeling over and over again throughout this movie. And the absence of gore makes it even more insane that that why is this making me feel a sort of way? It's just, it kind of, it, it, it perfectly hits this note. Like, it's like with a weird brown note of, of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that's just like, I don't really want to watch it as much as I love it. And as much as great as I think it is, I'm not just going to chuck it on at a party. Like, Hey, you guys want to get together and watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You know, it's, it's not a fun movie for me, which is why it, it ranks so low on this list should not be, you know, any sort of indictment about this movie or how good it is. I just threw it at five. Cause I, I want to watch it. You know? And I'll tell you, you're not going to catch any hell from me, Mikey, cause it's the exact reason I have it in, in third place like i ain't trying to just watch texas chainsaw massacre like is it a better movie than you know nightmare on elm street yeah it's a way better movie than nightmare on elm street is it a better movie than halloween yeah i don't know but when i came to ranking them i was just like yeah i just don't i don't know man it is grimy it is a nightmare um, it takes a little something out of you. I think it's kind of like it, it's 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 not nothing to just sit and watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I don't. Maybe that means it should be number one. I don't know. And if you put it at number one, like yeah, I think that's not a bad that's not a bad movie to be like. That's my favorite a horror movie. I think it's a great example of a horror movie, like Matt was saying. 
boy, does it feel real? Like I was saying when I was talking about the remake, right? Like everything about the remake where it's like everything seems like a prop. Everything seems like somebody made it and put it there and then put a bunch of water on it um, to make it seem scary. Um is the exact opposite thing than what's going on in Texas. Like not, nobody looks, and, and it feels weird, and it feels uh, deranged. And uh, yeah, it is an unsettling movie. I gotta have it in three, just me, personally. Well, I've got this up on number two, because I, I, I do, I think this is one of the best horror movies going, and it is, it's because of, and it's all because of that vibe. And the feeling that it gives you and the way that it can conv- not only does it convince you that what you're watching is kind of real, but it also convinces you that you've seen way more than you've seen. Because so many people walk out of this saying that they saw body parts flying all over the place and they saw chainsaws <laughs> going into people and everything. It's like, no, you didn't. And when you when you talk about the remake, you talk about these other movies not understanding it enough to remake what it is. And it's kind of funny because almost all of the sequels had the same problem because so many people look at this movie and they say, this is a movie about Leatherface. And it's not like Leatherface is not what this movie's about. It's about a family. And the only one, the only sequel that got what it was about is part two and and that's mainly just because it was toby hooper and he just he still brought in this whole like messed up family dynamic and he brought in chop top to kind of enhance the insanity aspect because again that's what really made the first one so crucial and that's what it made it so real is that even though these people were doing horrible horrible things in a very small amount of time the movie was able to kind of make you understand like why they ended up the way that they ended up. And you kind of got where that insanity came from. They just gave you enough details that you were like, oh, okay, that's what that's what's going on. Okay, cool. And holy crap, do I love this movie. And yeah, it may not be a movie that I like to throw on for the hell of it. But every time I put this movie on, I I can't get my eyes off of it. It's just it's just that good. And that's why it's my that's why it's my second place. Well, that'll take us up to the real second place. Or is it the real second place? This is where it's going to get pretty interesting, guys. This is where it's very strange here. Because, again, I had 166 people send in rankings. And you can see that the gaps were huge. I mean, there's the smallest gap in between any two movies so far has been like 50-some points. So you'd understand why it's shocking to know that at number two, with 403 points, it's a tie. Whoa. (laughs) Both Nightmare on Elm Street 1984 and Halloween 1978 both got exactly 403 points. So you know what I need to do? I need to call in a tiebreaker. I need somebody that knows both of these movies very well. Somebody that may not have seen every horror movie out there, but has definitely seen these. To to break this tie, we are going to go to my lovely wife, Christy. So when you ask me to decide between these two movies, it's really difficult because they're both such good movies. But the end of the day there's only one halloween so there it is that makes our number two movie with 403 points nightmare on elm street from 1984 now the lowest score that it got this is the first movie on the entire roster to not get any dead last votes but it did get a one eighth place ranking and it was ranked in first place 40 four times which is pretty solid um i had it the lowest out of us because i had it in third place mikey and derek you guys both had it in second place but maddie this was your number one 
Yeah, and I, I keep I feel bad to keep doing this to Halloween. I feel like this is the second panel. I put Halloween at what third? And I love Halloween, guys. I love it. Listen, you gotta understand. Um Freddy Krueger uh growing up when I grew up and watching those movies when I did, you gotta understand there was Freddy Bubblegum, there was Freddy trading cards, there was Freddy everything, and I had all of it scared the hell out of me i'll never forget my dad came home from the video store and he goes come here and grabs me like homer and bart and pulled me into the room he goes you gotta see this <laughs> way too probably way too young for it and it changed my life i love this movie i think it has amazing characters dialogue a villain that has personality that's legitimately scary that's using dreams, which has never been really done before, except for maybe Dreamscape, which I also love. But it it really, the story is everything. And the characters are everything in this movie. You feel invested. You're never not invested. And it's scary as hell. It, to me, it's just perfect. And John Saxon's in it. I love him. Uh, just, yeah. It's my favorite horror film, for, uh, probably by a mile. I just really love this movie. It's a nightmare on Elm Street, right? Like, <laughs> if you want to talk about, you know, Halloween or even Friday the 13th, really like uh, jump starting that whole early 80s uh, slasher wave, I think you have Nightmare on Elm Street comes in in 1984 and sort of like, stops it almost dead in its tracks because everything that comes out after nightmare on elm street sort of feels like like it missed the boat right like it's not just anybody in a mask it is now this character and, and what a character freddy krueger is what is he right he's got this fedora hat he's got a red and green sweater in this weird razor glove it's like the strangest combination of things that you could put together but yet he is probably the like the biggest iconographic thing in horror why why does that even work why does it make sense I, it's freddy right like you can't like my, my daughter is just too she loves freddy she has no idea what he does like she has no idea what that glove is being used for i don't know the movie's great I love uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. It has a really mid-80s vibe. It's scary, too. I mean, you th I don't know now. The kids watching it are going to be, like, scared by it. I think you've seen things that are far, <laughs> far worse just on your phone looking at the news, probably. But, yeah, I got I got iPod number two as well. So, no, no shame to anybody who didn't have it as their number one but if you've got this as your number one horror movie of all time like i, I get it I, I can't show you here this room is filled with like so much like there's a glove like right there i don't know if you can see it <laughs> there's gloves right there i don't know if there's any freddy's but i mean there's a giant halloween poster right there that's that's gonna there's some halloween through mass but like freddy like all the other side of this wall is is like too much freddy i can't even see it's like <laughs> you couldn't count how many freddy things there are out here i love that guy I think it's interesting that what Freddy became was was an icon, like like the boys are saying, you know. But it's almost hard to separate the original movie from what Freddy is and what you know him and for, like as and 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 the merchandising and everything else. It's like if you really boil the first movie down and like if if it didn't create an entire franchise and and a worldwide craze and make this this character like the mickey mouse of horror basically like and you went back and watched that movie it would like blow your mind because it's like it's so out there it's so different it's so weird like derek was saying the character is, is just it, it just seems like this this random you know throw something at the wall and, and see what sticks that then changes horror icons and what that's supposed to be now you have i feel like you've been trying to chase that ever since like i don't think there really has been something, you know, you could, maybe could argue, you know, Chucky in some way, but there's some, something on that level where it's like, how do we make a horror icon? What does that look like? If we had to design the perfect slasher, the, the perfect monster, what, what is that, you know? And, and nothing has ever touched Freddy Krueger as far as I'm concerned. I think Wes Craven's a genius. I think he, you know, he's obviously that's, that's the, 
the big one, you know, that, that he brought to us. And I thought that was, you know, it, it definitely deserves to be in this top five here and, and uh, two, one, whatever, wherever you put it, I, I love it. But and also the, kind of the opposite of Texas Chainsaw, you can put Nightmare on Elm Street on every single day. If that's just playing in the background, if the soundtrack's on, if, if whatever, I mean, you know, no, I don't think anyone's going to, going to scoff at that. Well, I feel bad because I have it in third place. Uh, so it's like the only one that doesn't have it up in the top two. But uh, I do love Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it's actually, it is. It's one of the best horror movies uh, that's out there. Freddy is absolutely one of the best characters in all of horror. And I think that he is up there in the echelon of the Universal Monsters. And he, be- he, he deserves to kind of be carried forth into new generations, much like Dracula or Frankenstein or whatever. I almost would like to see somebody else kind of do a different take on a Freddy just to have that character kind of revitalized and, and, and brought back in a new way. Um, as long as, you know, as long as it was still kind of fun, but I will say, I think the reason why I had this one in third in comparison to the two that I had above it is that even when I was younger, I was personally never really that scared of Freddy. And I think it just, because I've, I've always been like I even since I was a, a young lad, I've always been that guy that that didn't believe in ghosts and I didn't believe in supernatural stuff. So the movies that really hit a nerve with me were the things that were not supernatural. So something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween scared the crap out of me a whole heck of a lot more than like a dude that would show up in my dreams. But that that doesn't mean that the movie's any any worse. It's just hey hey. Stop. Stop it. Go away. But that doesn't really reflect on the movie because it is. The movie's great. It's just if I'm putting these out there as movies that affected me or movies that I love or things that have really stuck with me, uh, this is the third of those, I suppose. (laughs) (laughs) It worked like a charm. And that just leaves one movie in our number one spot. One movie with also 403 points, but one extra nod of Christie's appreciation uh, because that makes our number one film, Halloween 1978, our king of the crop here. And here's what's going to show. Even though uh, it, it also didn't have any dead lasts, even though it did have two ninth place votes, right? It had two people put it in ninth which is a lower score than Nightmare on Elm Street had. However, it was ranked in first place 65 times, which is 21 more first place spots than Nightmare on Elm Street got. So I think that it's I think that it's kind of good that it that it made it into uh first place here. Now, of the four of us, me, Mikey, Derek, we had it in first place. Maddie, you had it in the third. So you've got to talk about it first, then, damn it. Because oh, yeah. then we're just going to gush about it. You son of a... <laughs> I know. I know. I like. I had to put it somewhere. I like Texas Chainsaw. I like Nightmare on Elm Street more than I like Halloween. Does that mean that I don't like Halloween? I've talked about Halloween more on this channel than probably any other film. I, I love Halloween. Who doesn't love Halloween? I've actually run out of stuff to talk about because I've talked about it so many times. Um, uh, uh, the Donald Pleasance is a great actor. Um, yeah, he uh, he was sober, I think, most of the time. Uh, Derek, but, uh, take it away. I got nothing. I, I love this movie. I don't think he was sober. Probably not. He no. was drunk the whole time. Uh, come on, he only drank six beers. Six beers. Six. <laughs> didn't Carpenter try to get Christopher Lee? I didn't know that. That would be pretty cool, though. I don't know where I heard that. I thought Christopher Lee turned it down. Um, but he had originally asked. Chris- I maybe I read. That, I thought I read that in Timelines of Terror. Uh, <laughs> All right. Maybe um, I don't know. I have, to, I have to read my own book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly, I've. I got this whole kind of fortress to Halloween. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that should be my favorite film, but it's probably, you know, has one has something to do with the other. 
uh, and vice versa. I think more than anything, though, I think Halloween is the perfect masked, masked slasher film. It just, for that style of movie, Halloween did it right. Like, that's just the way that it should be. And I don't know. I don't know if that's like, a, it's everything about it. It's the way it looks. It's the way it sounds. Um, it's the pacing of it. It's Michael as a character. Um, everything, it just congeals, at least for me and for apparently, what, 60s? <laughs> than other people um it just it all comes together to be i think it's the perfect example of that kind of movie uh kind of everybody tried to make halloween at least until they started trying to make friday the 13th um but i don't know that anybody ever ever did it none of the remakes certainly did it uh none of the other sequels really even did it i mean i don't think it's a great franchise i don't even think that michael's the the greatest character i just there's something about halloween though um that john carpenter really did it he just made the perfect version of that um and i think that's evidenced by you know how many times they've tried to bring it back and do it again and copy it I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, because I have I found this actually, and keep in mind, I, I, this book was written uh, two years ago now. So this was not on the forefront of my head, but I will read you a small passage, a selective reading from the book Timelines of Terror um, by, by, what do you know, me? Um, here you go. Here's some information. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Played by veteran actor Donald Pleasance. The role was originally written for Peter Cushing who had uh, just finished a big role in Star Wars, but he balked at the low salary offer. Christopher Lee was also offered the role, although he passed as well, a decision he later admitted to regretting. The thing that Halloween does is, like, there's different types of fear, I think, and, like, that sort of cozy fear of actually celebrating Halloween. It has, like, nostalgia there. There's something that's kind of cool about it. You want to be scared. You're, like, excited about it. I feel like that was the feeling I got when I would pop in the tape of Halloween on Halloween as a kid. And that that continues to this very day in my old age. At least once a year, that movie is going on in celebration of the holiday. And there's something about that where it is scary and it it and it is you know a really well written you know horror story but it gives you this this little you know snapshot of halloween at, at a certain time in in this suburban you know neighborhood vibe that you might not have that same experience with something like texas chainsaw massacre like i don't i don't know that it's a cozy kind of kind of scary you know it's not something that you're you're excited for you're waiting for no i don't think anybody plans for a trip through through rural texas you know and bumping into weird rednecks you know i I don't think anyone's excited about that you know but there's something about halloween that it it is halloween to me it's it and and that's another reason why why i love it and it's going to go on every year you know, Friday the 13th happen all the time, and sometimes I'll throw a marathon on and something like that, but it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have that same, you know, importance to me. It doesn't it doesn't feel like, like a holiday the, the same way that movie is connected to that holiday and connected to that nostalgia, and, and I love it. I have a very odd relationship with Halloween, because in terms of the franchises that we're talking about here today... Uh, the five franchises that we're talking today. Halloween is probably my least favorite overall franchise of them. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is close. But I will say that Halloween is, in my mind, easily the best movie of this bunch. Out of any of these franchises, the first Halloween is just the fantastic movie. I myself don't care for much of anything that came after the original Halloween. Uh, There's a couple of them in there that I enjoy, but nowhere near 
as much as that original movie. And I also, I love John Carpenter. Like, he's one of my favorite directors. And this is one of his best movies. I love this movie so much. I live in Haddonfield. I'm, I I live <laughs> down the street from Michael Myers' house. The hedge is right over there. There, there it is. There's the thumb. There it is. There it is. I don't know what that thumb is and why it does it randomly, but it does. Apparently, I triggered it. I'm surrounded by Halloween, and I love it. And you, you want to know what the creepy thing about Halloween is? You want to know why that movie is so much more effective than the others, and why it really kicks in here? Because it's kind of what I was talking about here. What are the odds that a doll is going to come to life and kill you? Very little. What are the odds that a guy is going to come and kill you in your dreams? Very, very little. What are the odds that I'm going to be at a summer camp at this point? I, very, very little. I, like, I, I've never been to summer camp either. What are the odds that I'm going to be in the middle of Texas at some weird meat shack? Very little. What are the odds that I'm going to be in a suburban neighborhood on Halloween? Yeah, that's happening pretty frequently. It happens once a year. So the chances of running into an actual Michael Myers just some suburban dude that snapped and is out there stabbing people with knives that's something that can happen to me and i i live in the neighborhood where it can happen apparently because when i go trick-or-treating i'm in haddonfield i'm in that neighborhood so uh yeah it's it always sticks out it's one of the best movies by one of the best directors it deserves the number one spot i'm so happy that it is number one. I'm also happy that it shares that number one spot with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street because they're, they're both excellent movies. Um, but I think Christy made the right decision in making this one our number one movie. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. So there you have it. There is 10 movies, five heavy hitters of horror franchises, and it, there are five consecutive remakes. I'm I'm curious if we had put Hellraiser in there where it would have where it would have landed. But uh, but again, again, it's hard to tell if that is a remake or not. Uh, somebody suggested Candyman at one point, but Candyman also is not a remake. It's actually a sequel, so it doesn't doesn't belong in this list either. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of curious. Uh, you know what what the well, look, well first of all, let's take a look at the roster. Let's look at where everything landed because uh, I'm fairly comfortable with where everything landed there's nothing really that i think is that uh questionable or rage inducing uh i know that on the last episode of dead last i i was very very angry with a lot of replacements uh but on this episode i'm pretty happy i'm pretty happy with where everything uh shook up to be but if you're not happy with it um well then you're you're up a creek because you could have sent in your rankings and actually like uh, affected things you could have you could have swayed it if you preferred if you preferred nightmare on elm street and you wanted it to be number one and you did not send in your rankings it's your fault that it's second place because it was a tie one more ranking could have changed it and it might have been yours so why didn't you send in your ranking well, maybe you're watching this a year afterwards. I don't know. But tell me down below what you would like to see in your uh, in your rankings, what they were, what they would have been. Uh, let me know if you agree with what uh, 166 people decided or if you disagree with 166 people decided because I know one of you is going to put in the, com the comments, this should have been number one or this should have been dead last or whatever like that. Um, but you're not disagreeing with me. You're not even disagreeing with the four people that are on this panel. You're disagreeing with 166 people that sent in their lists. So there you go. Tell me down below if you enjoyed this video. If you liked seeing the boys again, hit that like button and hit it strongly. Uh, hit it hit it so much. If you like this video so much, hit it twice. Um, don't do that actually. Uh, and then uh, subscribe to the channel, of course, and hit the bell to get notified when new videos are coming up. And of course, I want to thank my panel for coming on board once again. Uh, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys coming on to talk about these things, in some cases for the third or fourth time. Uh, very, very thankful to have you guys back. You will be seeing these fellas again in the future. Uh, I don't think the panels are back on a regular basis, but they will be 
an occasional thing. Uh, I think I have some things lined up uh, coming up that, that, that might be a perfect thing to have them on for. So we'll we'll see what we can do. If you want to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash movie timelines and become a patron. And you can actually participate in Dead Last. If you enjoyed sending in your ranking, you can do it every single month. Every single month you can send in your rankings. We're working on um, a, a different list right now. Uh, send it in. Uh, go to patreon.com and do that. And we'll see you very shortly. For another great video. Thanks a lot, guys, and bye-bye.